Stay tuned for the biggest fish, the hottest bites, this week here on In-Depth Outdoors with James Holst. Look at that. Wow, is that an incredible fish? And the rest of the IDO fishing team. We're headed to the best fisheries across the upper Midwest and Canada. We'll fish longer, explore unfished bodies of water, and go further off the beaten path in search of the hottest bites in fresh water. <laughs> With Cal Schweel. What a specimen. And Joel Nilsson. This is an absolute monster. <laughs> This is In-Depth Outdoors. Ready? Time to go chugging. <laughs> I feel like somebody about to relapse. I haven't done this in so long. <laughs> oh man. Up or down, David? We'll go up. On today's episode of In-Depth Outdoors, we're fishing uh, third week of April. A uh, very cold and blustery day on the Mississippi River near Prairie du Chien, Wisconsin. And what we got going on here today is uh, we're faced with a pretty tough bite. Uh, very cold weather, uh, it actually snowed overnight. So we're gonna employ a technique that uh, most of you at home have probably never heard of. We're going walleye fishing on a river and there's not a fishing pole in the boat. We're gonna use a technique that uh, is very popular in isolated pockets across the upper Midwest and it's called hand lining. If you've ever had uh, any questions about this hand lining technique, this is a show for you, so do stick around today on In-Depth Outdoors. You ready? Let's get them. I appreciate you choosing a close landing site. Yes. Uh, there's, a, there's a couple of better landings uh, both you have to pay for, but this is good. Yeah, I use it all the time. I'll get the kicker motor if you want to get the towing motor. I got it. We got little flakes of snow, Dave. Well, we can't have sunny in, in 75. Yes, we could have. Oh. <laughs> all right, that's set about right. All right. So um, why would you want to use this hand lining technique and uh, when is it most appropriate? Uh, in the spring on uh, rivers like the Mississippi River, when you get real high current and cold water temperatures, you really need a very precise presentation to catch fish in those tough conditions. And that's what we're faced with right now. Uh, we've got uh, real high flows. Uh, even though we haven't had a very wet spring, this particular pool we're fishing does move a lot of water. We've got about a two and a half mile an hour current going through the area we're gonna fish. And uh, we're in an outside river bend where the walleyes come to spawn. And they do so because of that current. They really wanna be there because it keeps that rock clean. It's a great place for them to lay their eggs, but it's also a very difficult place to fish unless you're using a technique like hand lining. And there's no rod involved because the amount of weight you use, if you put it out on the end of a rod, would be very difficult to handle. So uh, we're starting out here with what looks like a basic wheel uh, with line wrapped around it, but it's a spring-loaded wheel. So as I pull out line, if I let it go, that spring-loaded reel retrieves it for me. And then on this end, I've got a weight. Now you can use weights anywhere from a pound up to three pounds. Thankfully we don't have to use anything as extreme as a three pound weight today. Uh, I believe Dave's gonna start with a pound and a quarter. I'm gonna go a little bit heavier just to kind of see which weight works better in the conditions we're fishing. And what you do is on each one of these attachment points, I've got a small diving crankbait. And that weight suspended on that line is incredibly controllable. I know where my baits are at at all times and we can do so at very slow trolling speeds going into the current. 
It's wonderfully efficient, keeps the baits right where they need to be, and that's the key to success under tough conditions. So the first bait I'm putting in the water, it's a number seven, purple descent, original floating wrap. Very basic, very simple. Uh, we're gonna be fishing in about 20 foot of water, give or take. Obviously that bait will not dive deep enough on a trolled line to get where I want it to go. And because the water temperatures are cold, you really need to fish small baits. So that's the solution that this hand lining technique provides. You need to get small baits down there, but how do you do that in 20 foot of water? So first line goes back. And I've got a, a stacked line on top of that. It's gonna be a second bait, about the same size. This is a number seven jointed wrap going to dive a little bit deeper so we've attached it further up that shank and on a little bit longer leader and the idea is to get both of these baits running at about the exact same depth one behind another so that first bait that I just threw in it's going to run where my front finger is the second bait's going to be further behind it but at the same depth deadly effective if you get it set up right so there's both baits over the side and then it's as simple as just dropping this weight to the bottom and I am no hand lining expert I have not done this in a long time it's probably been about uh, 10 or 12 years since I've last done it but it's so simple even a caveman can do it all right Dave what do you need from me man I'm good you got Let's, the controller I got the controller we're steering we're in the right zone I see fish on the graph I think we're ready to hit it New for 2015, the release of the WX 1910 from Skeeter Boats redefines the features and performance anglers can expect from a 19-foot boat, including the torque transfer system, making the hull on the WX 1910 the strongest ever built, the React keel, enabling unparalleled boat control in tough conditions, and integrated jump seats for the ultimate in seating flexibility. Visit your local Skeeter Boats dealer and see for yourself why no other 19-foot boat offers more advanced features, storage, and performance than the WX 1910. We're at the walleye mat, James. I mean, this is the zone. This is the spot. It's kind of right where that current starts to sweep. Oh, 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 oh. Mine got real heavy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Fish on? Yep. So awesome. here's where things start to get interesting and why these reels that retrieve the line are so important. If uh, you didn't have something to collect that line, you'd end up with a really big mess in the bottom of the boat. But you just hand over hand, nice and slow. Let the reel do the work, and in comes the fish. Decent fish, took that top uh, jointed bait. Yeah? Oh. Awesome. Thump, thump, thump. Weight goes in here. I might uh, bring him in right over by you, Dave. Alrighty. Whoop. There he is. Nice fish. Yeah. Nice male. Good start. Oh yeah, that male is primed, but that's what I like to see. Smoked oh, yeah. it. Yep. Get that thing out of there. Come on, you. you Perfect, got it. it. Good job. All right, bait goes back in the water, and because that's a male and I'm hungry, he's coming home with us. <clears throat> Quality fish. And uh, this is a technique where you can really put a lot of nice fish in the boat really quick. I like that. Very cool stuff. Nice job. Let's get some more. You know, and the, the, the conditions we've been talking about, we're starting to get little frost pellets falling and, you know, kind of collecting in the boat here. Water temperatures are really dropping. Uh, this would typically be a scenario where walleye fishing would be really tough, but because we're able to keep these small little baits so tight to the bottom at slow speeds, and that's what's critical here, we're going about 0.8 to 1.2 mile an hour upstream into a pretty brisk current. There's very few techniques that would allow a guy to as efficiently approach these fish as this hand lining gear does. So it's not a universal presentation. You're not gonna use this in all bodies of water at all times. But in this situation, it's the best way to go. You're out a little deeper this time, David. Yep. Yeah. Is that because you wanna keep your side of the boat in the right I'm trying spot? To, trying to keep my side. There's a lot of weight here. 
There's a lot of weight here. Oh, you've got one? Yes, I do have one. I'm going to give you the controls. <laughs> Did you get your double? I don't know. You know, it was head shake, you know, good shake, and then it would just went solid weight. Maybe. There's a lot of fish out here. Yeah. They stack in here. They really don't know the start to finish time. Mm -hmm. Except for last year when I came out, I started catching moon eyes and not walleyes. I done. called that the end. Right. right. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. This uh this could be a double. There's a lot of weight. It might just be a good fish though. You know, I started out with that pound and a quarter and I jumped up to two pound just so I could get that angle tighter. Mm -hmm. And I do believe that definitely made a difference. You can see them back there, that's a nice fish. They get that big old bucket mouth open and it's like having a, a parachute for them. Yep, it's a single, it's not a double. Anything I can do to help? Uh, no, words of encouragement, you can, you know. You're doing a great job, Coos. There you go, that works. That thing has got that thing dog, just dog bone sideways in its mouth. Yep. It's not going anywhere. Oh, that's a little uh, husky jerk, isn't it? Yep. Oh, he's just, oh, come on. Give him some drag, man. That's a Give nice fish. Oh, you can just see oh, how much oh, current oh. we got going on here. The boat's only going 0. 0.7 mile an hour upstream, and it looks like you're fighting in about a four mile an hour current. Oh. Look at that. Yeah, that's a nice fish, James. He's got I wonder if it's not, is it a male or is it a it, spawned out female? It was, it's still doing its thing. Oh, it's yeah, a definitely a male, yep. Right? Telltale. But, uh, you know, I don't pull husky jerks very often, but uh, they do have a little bit different action than the F7s and the J7s, so mm -hmm. I definitely wanted to eat it. Well, I think the common characteristic there is just a small bait. Right. That's a really yeah. darn nice Yeah, fish. we should we should put that on the ruler. I'd be curious, but like you said, probably low 20s. Okay, so, you know, we're gonna keep some fish today, but not this one. They're just a little bit too big. They're not very good eating. Man, they're a lot of fun to release. Oh, yeah. that's what I'm talking about. Nicely done, buddy. Here you go. Thank you. Whatever that's... you were doing, do it again. Do it again. <laughs> hey, you remember when we were hanging out last night? You know, me, you, Gail. That's my girl. <laughs> you guys are awesome. And then you went to bed. I was tired. You were super tired. And then it was just me and Gail. Mm-hmm. Uh, alone. What? Oh, oh, yeah! It's all in the pause. New Shadow Rap from Rapala. That's what it looks like in the water. I've got both the baits actually in the water right now. And as you look at the shank, that's the genius of this technique. You've got the weight here, a 10 foot lead here, and a 20 foot lead here. And what ends up happening is the baits end up running at about the exact same depth. You've got less line here, so the, that little bait doesn't dive quite as far as this one does. And it's almost like playing follow the leader down there. One's right behind the other. If the fish doesn't want uh, one color or one bait, he just takes the one that comes up next. It's all about efficiency and knowing right where those baits are. Started a little bit further down this time. Yeah, you know, there's riprap all the way down. We just kind of dial in our little hot spot, but uh, that will give uh, some of these other fish a little crack at our crankbaits. And others a break, right? Right, like like that one. Really? Oh, stop. Oh, yeah. Well, you better <laughs> take that. <laughs> Let's see, I'm gonna say, that came on one of those crankbaits. <laughs> <laughs> you are a handlining virtuoso, but you're no magician. No. Yeah, there's some weight there. Besides the uh, two pound weight, he's, oh yeah, he wants to play on your side of the boat. I'm speeding up so he can't. <laughs> that came on that husky jerk again. Huh. Nice. Actually, looks like you hit mine. There yours goes, there goes yours. Nice. Yeah. That's They're a nice. really, really nice male. Yeah. Perfect eater. Yeah. Probably upper teens. Yeah. 
Join the box, my friend. Nice. Nice. We better check yours. Uh, that I will. Join it. Okay. I will. We're good. What a friend. Catches a fish, tangles me up, gets me out of the water. <laughs> I see how you roll, David Kuntz. Um, that feels like a pretty good fish, Kuntz. Yeah. You know, all them fish are coming in over 20 feet of water this time. Yep. I felt a little hit, like, man, maybe that's a small fish, you know, hit and run, drive by kind of thing. And then it got really, really heavy. Double? Well, you've only had three so far this year, so I'm going to say no. Just Come a better on. fish. Come on, positive. I think you got one. Just, it's definitely heavy. Of course, there's a lot of current out in this section. Yeah. Man. <laughs> well, just a good fish. Just a spinner. I'll slow yep. down a little bit, Dave. He's got one hook in his mouth. I think he grabbed it right at the head. Nice fish, James. Yep. Every one of these fish has been really quality. I mean, what's to complain about with that? Probably about a 20 inch fish. And they're really digging this jointed number seven you got going on here. You got a player somewhere, Dave? Yep. Oh, I can get it just as easy as you can. Zip. We are putting together a super nice batch of fish here. In the bucket he goes. Not bad for a uh, tough set of conditions. And back it goes. This is uh, efficiency at its finest right here. You get a 26, 27 inch fish on this thing in this kind of current, it's gonna be a tussle. Yeah. Rule number one when you're fishing uh, hand lining gear, don't wrap the wire around your hands. Basically, I think you do it the same way, don't you, Dave? Just kind of yeah, weave it you between know, your I fingers. Yeah, you know, weave it through the fingers, and but never wrap it around a finger. Uh, I got another one. Sweet. How about them apples? That's the way it's supposed to work. Yes. Drop it down, go to town. Feels like a solid fish. Must be on the top one. Nope, bottom one. Good. That makes it easier. Oh yeah. Nice fish, James. Nice oh, job. Yeah. He T-boned that. Oh yeah. That has pretty much been the consistent today, hasn't it? Yes. I mean, you've done a lot of switching, I've done a little switching, but that purple descent should pretty much stay on the rods at all times. Yeah. And that one took the back half of the crankbait and just snarfed it. All right. All right, one more hook, you're gonna be fine. But uh, we've had a whole bunch like that today. Long and lean. Egg fertilizing machines. <laughs> <laughs> this one's going home for dinner. All right. Nice. I think I'm going to change that, uh, that jointed. Okay. That one's been quiet for me. Yep. The purple dust yep. is staying. Okay. All fishermen are created equal. Some just use better fishing line. There's another one. Yep, there's another one. We're doing this handoff way too many times. <laughs> Yeah, it was kind of interesting. It was uh, 22 foot of water, pot of fish go through. Dunk. Yep. You can almost count them down. All right, come on. Some pretty good weight here. You know, other than the random sauger, we have not caught any small fish. No, they're really nice quality males. Now this technique can be used to catch females. Yes, Just absolutely. right here, right now. Not a lot of females feeding right here. Nope. There's one of the smaller males we've caught. Yep. Still a good eater. Oh yeah. Nice fish, come on a hot steel, number seven. Good fish. Mm -hmm. I think he's gonna see some grease. Grab that needle nose from me, sir. You do it. Do 
just like that. <laughs> he says, I'm happy to go in there for you. <laughs> Little does he know. <laughs> All right, let's get another one. Ooh, starting to feel some good gravel. Gravel. We might also just stay on this run. I mean, yeah. this is where we caught all the fish. Right. And they really are quality fish. Yeah, that's not bad. Mm -mm. Not bad at all. They're getting lean. You can tell they spent a lot of time chasing the girls around. Yes. Working them rocks. Good. What do you got? Smile <laughs> on your face? <laughs> Man, if you got another one of these red jointed jobbies. I should put it on. You should put it on. Of course, I've caught them on the bottom one too, the right. regular, you know, number seven yep. silver black. And that's what it is, a yep. little silver black jabby. Doesn't get any more basic than that. That's like no. the original Rapala color. Yep. <laughs> right on the top, top of his <laughs> snoot. <laughs> so there's a perfect example of dry bites. Yep. A lot of those, those fish are down there just trying to crush it. They're going to hit it. Mm -hmm. And they don't hit it every time. He unfortunately got it on the snoot of the nose, but that's what those drive-bys are. Just pushing at it. Yep. Well, when you got six hooks on a bait, they don't have to necessarily eat it, but if they put their mouth on it, our job is done. That's right. Barb's going to stick. And like that last one, it all depends on the order you get caught in. Yep. He's going to go back. Beautiful eater. We have caught just a ton of fish today. Yes, we have. Well, I don't know what you think, but I've caught a lot of fish today. I think we both have caught a lot of fish today, but yes, we have, you have caught a lot of fish today. And unlike a lot of our shows, once we get off the water, we got a lot of fish to clean. Yes. So uh, I've had my fill, had a great time. I am so happy you took the time to share this technique with me. It's been a long time since I've done it, and I've definitely got an appreciation for it. Good, uh, I'm glad you came down. You know, as much as I would have loved for it to been 75 degrees and sunny, this is probably the right conditions to demonstrate why this technique is really pretty cool. You get 38 degrees overnight, you get snow, rapidly falling water temperatures, and typically the bite's gonna be pretty tough. Yeah. We put the hurt on the fish today. We did good. And it's because speed control and depth control, you just can't beat it than what you're able to do with these handliner rails. Are you serious? Yeah, you're another a real fish. man, man. Another fish on. Great way to end the show. Yep. Oh, look at you showing off. <laughs> So this is gonna end our show. What a great way to do it. Uh, Dave hauling in one last fish. Uh, this technique, this hand lining technique, it's not a universal program. You can't use it on any body of water all season long, but if you're ever faced with current type conditions like we have here in the river, reservoirs, anytime you need to get a small bait deep, this is the program to be on. That is a really nice, you finally got one on that big blue silver. <laughs> nice way to end it, sir. That is a good job. From Dave and I, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. All right. Very nice. You need pliers on that one? Yeah, let's get a pliers on that. For more info on the latest fish reports, gear recommendations, and hottest techniques, connect with us online at indepthoutdoors.com or follow us on Facebook at In Depth Outdoors. And if you enjoyed today's show, be sure to let our sponsors know.